Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, this is Those Guys, with your host Matt Marrero, along with the other host, Chelsea for Tolsta! No, I wish, but no, it's Tristan Walter. Look at the voice you were doing over there, man. That was a real funny voice. Okay. What, I'm pretty... Well, I'm glad uh, you thought it was funny, but... <laughs> Alright, anyway, um... Just... So, okay. So, stupid voices aside. Your voice was stupid. So was mine. Uh, stupid voices aside, right? Yay. Here we are doing... Tristan, you okay? Okay, I thought I made him sad. Uh, today... <laughs> so... We broke the we broke this uh we're talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Still season one, part two, but we're not doing the full part two. So it it's really weird because I sit there and I'm like, how do I name this episode? Because it's like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, season one, part two, part one? Like no, obviously not. So you're just kinda like, What do I do here? So uh yeah, it was very hard to kinda like put everything together. Uh, like to put the episode title together, but essentially we're doing episodes 10 to 18 because we kind of wanted to break it down a little bit differently. Because at the when, when this was supposed to come out, when this was supposed to actually be started, it's not like we uh, we uh, recorded this. I was gonna say film. We're not filming. It's not like we recorded this that far in advance. But when we had originally thought of the idea, Tristan and I were like, okay, it's airing on Toonami. So and we're in America, so it's airing on Toonami for us. So we're like, oh, it's airing, airing on Toonami. We'll do like nine episodes or eight episodes, and then we'll do the other half in a second part. And even though it's already finished airing on Toonami, we sat back and thought, it'll just probably be easier for us to focus on this portion instead of taking the entirety of part two. Yeah. And so anyway, so this is us just talking about 10 to 18. Um, I So it was a very interesting thing to have happen because obviously I knew this was coming, even though I don't know much about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I did know that there's, you know, different parts and things like that. I've known that for a while now. And also, of course, uh, myself and uh, Pete Molsky have actually played uh, Judges of Adventure All-Star Battle for the PS3 on Those Guys Play Season 1. And currently, for our Let's Play channel, which is Those Guys Play, you can search that up, we're in Season 3. So I played that game a while ago, so I knew that things were going to end up changing eventually, right? And, And they do. But it's still so – it's such an interesting concept, and I love it so much because I am such a huge fan of the idea that we're just going to follow, you know, the bloodline of the Joe Stars and just kind of see where it goes and see what troubles, you know, they get into, their bizarre adventure, right? And having it, you know, go from it being, you know, uh, sadly, you know, the, the Joe Star that died, right, Jonathan Joe Star who's dead – Tears, Jonathan but it's okay. Joe Star, right? It's been forty-nine years since his heroic sacrifice. Exactly. So it's sad that he died and everything, but that I was... think it was so cool because, like, when we, because the thing is, when we first saw it, I think I was like, "Oh man, this sucks," and you know, and I don't know if I really commented on it in the sense that I'm not sure if I mentioned how, in a way, how cool it is to have a show that could literally kill off its main character but then tell you, it's okay, we have another one waiting for you. Right. I thought you were about to say, how cool it was that he died. I'm like, fuck you, I bad my eyes out when he died. <laughs> no, it's just cool, because like, you don't have shows yeah. like, okay, yes, you might have a show like Yu-Gi-Oh, obviously, you know, which, or like, there are, obviously there are shows, like, even like Super Sentai, where it's like, oh yeah, no, we're, we're an anthology series. Right, we're going to, or like Power Rangers as well, of course. Uh, you know, we're going to be an anthology series. We'll just come back later with, but like usually you won't have it be a thing where, you know, uh, Power Rangers. Let's say the next year's Power Rangers, right? You're going to have next year's Power Rangers. Have them all be the kids of the Power Rangers from 20 years ago, or something like that. Right. Like you're not really going to have that happen. That usually doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so just to have this anthology series, uh, you know, which is funny because it started in the, in the 80s or in the late 70s, and it was just really funny because I kind of sat back and I was just like, okay. So, like, I, I thought about it. And I was like, this, you know, manga's been going on for a while. And I checked how many parts there were, and then I know, you know, obviously how many parts have been animated thus far and what we're doing. Yeah. And I don't know any of the future plot lines. I don't know any of the future plot lines. But it's just insane to think that it's been going on for this long, still going on. 
Right. And the fact that we're seeing something that, even though obviously the storyline takes place in the past, they're also animating a story that was, you know, written 30 years ago. Right. So that's also something they kind of take into account, too, when seeing certain things. So, like, obviously the show itself was animated only a few years ago. So, like, obviously, you know, and, and by Warner Brothers uh, as well. So, like, they know, you know, like, what to animate, what not to animate, or like, what to say, what not to say. But even, like, certain things, when that one mobster called, um, uh, J- what's, it, what's his, um, uh, JoJo's friend that he met on the Smoky. street? Smokey, Smokey, thank you. When yeah. he called Smokey a mook, I was like, holy shit. I was like, he just called the black kid a mook. That random uh, mobster. Right. And I was like, oh. Um, so, like, him doing that, I was like, Jesus Christ. But, like, even then, it was still very interesting because, of course, you know, I assume they let that slide because immediately he gets his retribution by getting essentially murdered. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively <laughs> murdered. Um, also, something very interesting, too, by the way, uh, at least through, from these two JoJo's, I don't know about future JoJo's, you know, what might change as the years go by, but looking at these specific two JoJo's, I think it's really cool how they're keeping up this concept of, like, even though this JoJo is obviously a lot more brash and bold and is nothing like his grandfather, there's still this concept of, I'm not going to murder you. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like, like, obviously it's like, well, look, if it's like a demonic being, yes, of course. Right? right. But just because he's not like his grandfather grandfather doesn't mean that, like, oh, you know, this person is being possessed by him. Well, we got to do what we got to do. Let's slice him in half. No, that's right. not his first thought, which I think is really I mean, nice. I he'll thing try and play like it off so, like that, but he's not of actually course, really of course. go through with it. No, 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 of course, but I think that's something great about him because, you know, I feel like sometimes authors, when they try and do, when they, when, you know, because, I, like I said, not, there aren't really a lot of anime, in my opinion, that are like this. Obviously, there are many stories that, you know, uh, will sometimes follow, you know, grandkids or something just to try to, you know, uh, you know do a sequel. I mean, I look at Boruto, right? But right. at the same time, you're not, and of course, you know, I, eh. In my head, I was like, with Dragon Ball in a way, too, but not really. Um, anyway, point is... They tried that, to, and then it didn't. So, uh, <laughs> GT, a hero's wish. Anyway. Um, oh, God. I, hey, oh, that actually, wasn't that bad. Oh, was good. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you you only heard no. of GT, and you were like, <laughs> I'm going to vomit. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, the point special. is is that... Wait. Yeah, you forgot special. That was good. Anyway, my point is this. Right, Tristan. My point is, is that usually when, when an author has to, you know, go to either like a grandkid or just someone else like that, they always think, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make them more edgy and try to have them be so different compared to the first one that it's like, you know, it's a completely different one. And I'm happy that even though in some ways, of course, you know, he was obviously very different from his grandfather, he isn't right. going to go against those same ideals because he's still a Joe star. And yeah. being raised by Arena, other people too, of course. He had a mom and a dad, but like sadly, we don't see them. Um, but being raised by Arena, and of course, having someone like um, Speedwagon in the family, yeah. who of course was heavily inspired by his grandfather and by Zeppeli. Yeah, Speedwagon is. I think it's just bro. really. Just gonna throw yeah. that out there. No, right I. Now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to Speedwagon in a second. But I just want to say that I'm really happy that he still, like, has those principles at heart. Because I think yeah. it would be a little disheartening if he was just like, hey, let's just fucking murder everyone, right? I mean, come on. No, he's past that stage in his life. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. He does have anger issues. Like, granted, not like the original, you know, JoJo didn't have some anger issues. But, like, they were, he was still had to be like, well, you know, I was raised as a gentleman. He's more yeah. so like, nah, I'm going to fuck you up. But... Still, fucking you up doesn't equal, like, death. Like, yeah. he's, like, even if, like, someone's like, oh, I'm about to shoot this guy, and he's like, I need to save him, he might accidentally hit him too hard, right? But he's not mm-hmm. going to sit there and go, yeah, I'll rip his head off. It's like, no, they're still mm-hmm. humans, and JoJo, this JoJo knows that he's stronger. Yeah. Like, than normal humans. So... I I don't know. I, I appreciate that they kept those values with him. 
despite the fact that he is so wildly different. Yeah. Um, also, also, I think it was very smart to jump to his grandson because if you just jump to his son, it's still too close to the same era. Yeah. In my opinion. Like, if you were like, oh, you know, let's follow. Like, even though uh, the original JoJo was young, still, even if you jump to his son in, like, his 20s, that's still only 20 years later. Right. So being able exactly. to jump to grandson, yeah, being able to go to grandson, it's just like, oh, man, and we're in New York, which, of course, is a big difference. Yeah. So, now, granted, not in New York for long. Yeah. But still. But still. I think it was really cool how they were able to, you know, change the setting as well. Because in a way, it's funny. In a way, it feels like a completely different show, but in a way. But that's a good thing. Like, I like that in some ways it feels completely different. Because even though – I'll say this much, though. I think the anime did a little bit of a disservice to it because it rushed through certain things. So it feels like you're getting that abrupt shift ten episodes in. But – in terms of a manga, after like five, six volumes, yeah, that's a nice little shakeup. Mm. Especially it being a weekly manga as well at the time. So in my opinion, like, I feel like some of the – what? I think – I well, I don't have the manga. I haven't read it. I have a friend who's been buying, buying – vol, you know, who has volumes. And – I'm pretty sure it's only about the first, oh man, I want to say like the first two or three volumes deal with um, Jonathan, you might, and then... You, no, you're, uh, you have to understand, if if he's reading the American version, it's they they compile it differently. Okay. Yeah, so to say like, oh, it's only three volumes... Yeah, but that's like saying, oh, it was all, like Cell was only a part of a few volumes. It's like, well, you read a big edition. So that's like three and one or something like that. Yeah. So I believe the American versions compile them differently. It was actually about five or six in okay. the, or I think it was like either five or six or six or seven, which still as a weekly series in Japan, like that's good enough to be like, yeah, sure, let's. Let's change things up. Let's shake this up. Right. This will be different. But for nine episodes, that's real yeah. quick. So that's the only thing I think I'll, I'll say that's a bit of a problem with this anime so far is that uh, for the first two parts thus far, again, I don't know how the second half is going to deal with um, the manga, and I haven't even read uh, part two's manga yet, which is funny because every single time we do one of these shows, I'm like, I'm going to read the manga for what we're doing. I'm just going to fucking read it. Tristan, right. Tristan, I'm going to fucking read it. And then I don't get the chance to. Yeah. So I'm almost done with part ones, which is funny because last time I wasn't that far into part one when we did that podcast. But now I'm, I'm pretty much done with part one's uh, manga. And, you know, just looking at it, I do feel like certain things were rushed. And looking at this part that we're doing in the, on, on the show right now, I feel like it was just kind of rushed in certain ways where it's like, and JoJo's training will begin. The next episode, holy shit, his training's over. What the fuck, am I right? And yeah. I'm like, yeah. Now, granted, I mean, look, I, I'm not saying, believe me, you and I, Tristan, we come from mm-hmm. DBZ filler. Uh, in no yeah. way am I saying that Zeppeli should teach JoJo how to drive a Vespa. I'm not saying that. Oh, my God. In no way. Is Matt looking for the Vespa for arc? All right. right. No. Okay. No. But at the same time, I do. F- and granted, I haven't read the manga, so it literally could be like, and we jump in time, and you know that's on me, right? I'm yeah. just saying that in the way the anime was presented, it felt like it was like, you know, oh man, we're gonna have to train down here for a very long time in the same episode. Well, thank goodness we're just fucking getting through this now. Of course, by the end, like. It's not as if they didn't show the more dramatic parts and they didn't make it seem like, you know, things can go wrong. And it's kind of funny. Once you kill your first JoJo in the show, you're like, this one could die too. You don't know. Yeah. So that's another good thing. That's something I really uh, definitely enjoy about the series as well. And I know it might sound funny because someone would say, like, no, but he hasn't fought the main boss yet. Duh. But in my opinion, yes, of course, he has to, like, train. Duh. Like, obviously, they've 
said it in a way where it's like, no, but he has the rings inside of him, so, you know, he has to train for the month. But in my opinion, it's a bit different than Dio and the way they set up that with JoJo, where, like, even if you knew that JoJo was going to have to die at one point, you weren't going to think that, like, Dio was going to kill him, and then that was it. Right. Right? Like, you knew that, like, if you had known, oh, jo- the first JoJo was going to die, you would assume it would be taking out Dio as well. Right? But right. here, in a very weird way, you don't know what's going to happen because you're already sitting here like, wait a minute, they've already killed off one. How is this going to end now? So I think that's another real, like, a uh, very interesting kind of way this series has been set up. Because, it, you know, as much as I love Dragon Ball Z, after a while you're like, okay, Goku's going to win. I just want to see the journey of how it's going to happen. Right. Right. After a while. Because at first you're like, no, we died. And then you're like, no, again. Then you're like, all right. So, seriously? Is it going to... Oh, he did. Oh, he's dead. It'll never be back. All right, cool. Oh, he's back for a day. Like, as much as I love it, after a while, you're like, all right, Goku's here. Right? Right. But here, it's just like, oh, you know, even if it's someone might say, oh, but the Joe Stars are overpowered. Yeah, until they die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing. Like the Joe Stars just seem like they're overpowered and they don't really like have any hardships until they die and uh, then there's no Joe Star balls. It, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't what? <laughs> I would argue against well, no, I'm that, sure. their, that their family hasn't had any hardships cuz Jesus Christ. Well, when I say <laughs> no, when I you misunderstand. I talk about hardships like in battle. Right. Like I mean, the idea of like well, okay, what I mean is this. You look at this Joe Star, right? And it's kind of like, oh, no, he's about to be beaten. Actually, I'm a fucking magician. <laughs> like, that's what I like. I'm not saying he doesn't hurt inside. I'm not saying his parents didn't die. I'm not saying that he, like, li- like you know, he, he just has the happiest life ever. I'm saying that in right. the heat of battle, yeah. they, it feels like it's a typical, you know. And, again, in, in some ways it's. It feels like it's meant to be, in a way, like a like a, a parody, or at least like a over the top. You know, like you're about to do this, but then guess what I have for you. But in, but still, obviously, you can say if someone tries to tell you, oh, but that's a uh, problem, right? Like that they're always one upping each other, or that he always like, he beats yeah. the JoJo in the situation, whatever the JoJo is, always knows what they're doing even when they shouldn't. And then I would say until they die for real. And yeah. again, I don't know if any of the other JoJo's die, but I'm a, I don't know. So I, maybe this one lives a long and happy life. However, I just I have a strange feeling it's not going to happen. I don't know why. I just have a feeling it's not going to happen. I don't know, man. And I know you don't want to say anything because like, you've seen a little bit more than I have. Well, I I'm just can. saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining anyway. the fans right now. That's all. Well, hey, you don't know, if, you don't know anyone. Like, you don't know if anyone's watched this or not. I know. So they could they could be watching it with us and listening to it with us. I don't know. All I know is is that, um, you know. And you're about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could pull okay. that shit. That, okay, so, like, that is the funniest <laughs> joke I think Tristan has ever said on this show. Um, and, it's only, and it's simply a reference. Um, anyway, Tristan. How are you I feeling? Because I'm, I can rant about this. I can rant about this all day. How do you feel about this part? Well, uh, it's funny. I was sad to see Jonathan go, and at first, like, it almost reminded me of Doctor Who in a sense. It's like you kind of had to have mm. that that little bit of time to get used to the new Doctor, and in this case, the new JoJo. Um, personally, so like, literally. I really. I really so, connected to so, Jonathan, so... So, question. So, literally, yeah. it's going from Eccleston to Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, just going to put it out there. Like, yeah. In a way, kind of. Yeah. Anyway, p- please, keep going. But, yeah, once once I got uh, even just a few episodes in, you know, I, I immediately loved Joseph. You know, because he is such, you know, a different, you know, different from his grandfather. He still has the same, like, I would say basic code of honor, kind of, you know, things like that. Um, 
and you know, obviously not the one to be the first one to give the killing blow if he doesn't have to. But just the way he goes through battle, like I know you you had said, you know, mentioned like the characters being overpowered or something to that effect. Uh, in this case, I would say Joseph is actually much much less powerful than his grandfather. Jonathan was well, the yeah. you know hulking behemoth of a man, and not to say that no, Joseph no, no. Uh, you know. You know, yeah. you're right. You're right. When I say powerful, I don't mean like punchy, punchy, punchy. I'm referring to like you know, in an RPG, when you gain a level, your intelligence also grows. So right. like, just because he can't punch someone hard it doesn't mean that he can't legit be like i'm a magician you're a magician how about you go get that why would i get it if it's coming right back at me kid you're fucking bleeding out (laughs) like yeah that's what i'm saying showing excuse me (laughs) oh and then um but yeah so that's what I'm saying. When I say overpowered, I'm not just talking about, like, you know, he can, like, punch someone with his dick. I'm referring to the fact that, like, <laughs> he... Right. <laughs> you can't tell me that that hasn't happened yet <laughs> out of canon, or that isn't going to happen in one of the future parts. You can't, you can't assure me of that, Tristan. I, I don't know myself, so... Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, things get really weird in part nine. Anyway, um, oh, God. but I'm just saying that, <laughs> no, but I'm just trying to say like, all jokes aside, right? I, yeah. So no, you were talking about the fact that like, look, even though he's not as powerful, but what else were you? Cause I know you were on, yeah, a, on a roll. Jonathan, with, um, I mean, yeah. Joseph basically goes in the sense of trying to outsmart or, you know, even if it is by a trick or, you know, even, uh, Caesar, Basically, you know, uh, Zeppeli's grandchild as well. That's what I also love, too. You get to see, you know, Zeppeli's family line is still entangled into this as well. Um, yeah, I when I saw, when I saw blonde-haired dude, I know I should have gotten that it was Zeppeli because of his accent, but even Zeppeli's accent wasn't thick. Yeah. Right? So, like, so when I heard the kid speaking, and it was like, oh, someone that you're going to know in Rome, like, it really should have connected that it was Zeppeli. Like, Matt... I feel stupid for not thinking that it was Zeppeli's kid or grandkid, right? But I don't know why my thought was – because here's the thing too, right? Zeppeli, Zeppeli's hair was darker, and it was in a hat, right, and short. Right. When I yeah. see that kid's, like, curly blonde hair, I'm like, do you had a fucking kid? Uh. <laughs> no, because, like – no, because here's the thing, right? My thought is this, right? My thought is good guy teams up with bad guy's kid to – fight bad guy like just the idea of like you know goku vegeta eventually vegeta becomes good or goku piccolo actually is the perfect way to look at it right yeah so like in my head i'm like are they like you know is that like dio's kid and it was just like and i was literally was just like oh sir um uh, uh, mr zeppeli i was like motherfucker of course not (laughs) i was really mad i was like this kid stupid matt he was undead stupid Anyway, I was I was frustrated. I was like, damn it. Thought it was going to be... Like, I'm granted, Zeppelin's kid's cool. But, like, Dio's kid would be cooler. Just saying. Just putting mm-hmm. it out there. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, so you... Uh, you... Yeah, Zeppelin... It's talking about Zeppelin overall. Or Zeppelin and his kid. You were talking about his, his, uh, his line still living on. That is also a nice thing to look at, too. Because, you know, you had him mention his family. Like, oh, I left them a very long time ago. But you never really thought they'd be revisited. Right. Like now, honestly, now I'm looking at every character, and I'm like, I'm writing down names. I'm like, you're going to be important in part seven. I know you will. Like I'm writing everyone's name down. Like might even that one random person. Part. Well, no, the one random person that JoJo saved, um, the, the one he called a floozy. Right. I'm like, she's going to be important. Why? Because she had dialogue. I don't know why. Something tells me, it's like, you're going to be important. You're not going to know Smokey, until it happens. Yeah, and Smokey, going to be the next Dio. I don't know why. I'm just, oh boy. I'm just, it's the one you least expect, Tristan. Oh, boy. We all love Smokey. I did, too, until he was Dio Brando. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, 
the, uh, I'm not saying well, this show wouldn't pull that kind of twist because it would, but <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one thing I want to say too is, and this is going to be a very weird thing out of context. I love mm-hmm. that they brought in Nazis. Now you're right, Matt. Out that of does context, we are not a Yes, but I think longtime listeners, longtime listeners of the show, know what I'm talking about. And if they don't, yeah, or if any new okay. listeners don't, we, it's just we've the done enough of, like, Indiana Jones podcasts that I think. I think we're good. Well, because we've done Indiana Jones for Friday Night Movies, and we did one for actual, like, uh, the first ever, and uh, currently the last ever, Monday Night Movies. And also, we've done Helsing, right? So we've done a lot of different stuff. The point is, right, is that Nazis are the best kind of villains to bring in. And they're the best, because anytime you're like, I just want to take real-life people, Right, and just shake them and not feel angry if we have to like mow them down, and like and you talk about this like of course like in a in a movie, television show, video game, right? Either you make them zombies, or you make them Nazis. Yeah. And with the with the way this show is going, with the stone mask and everything, we might get some Nazi zombies on our hands, Tristan. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Double it's like the that. pleasure. Oh shit. No, I think double the pleasure for just mowing down and ripping people to shreds. Because, like, the thing is, is that, like, you, again, like, you don't, you don't want to have a situation where, like, you know, if, because think about it, right? If these guys weren't, like, uh, you know, this, if there was a group, right, that was searching for the stone mask, and they were evil, right, and they were bad, uh, or rather the pillar men, and they were bad, but they weren't Nazis, you'd be Mm -hmm. like, oh, that sucks, they're evil, you know, we don't like them. But I guess we should hurt them. But, like, there would still be an idea of, like, well, like, why would, like, how would you feel comfortable with you, like, with one of the main characters killing them? And it's just literally like, well, because of the era that we're in, we could just make them Nazis. And it's like, yes, murder them all. Perfect. Mm. No survivors. Like, like, anyone that's like, I don't think we should do that. It's like, okay, either too liberal or neo-Nazi. Which one? Like, we shouldn't murder the Nazis, all right? Which side are you? Too liberal or neo? Um, So, yeah, I just, that's how I feel, right? Like, I feel like that's a perfect villain. Not just because of the time period, but because, also, by the way, another good reason is, and you see see this in a lot of media, uh, especially Indiana Jones, actually, just this idea that apparently Hitler was into the supernatural or, like, looked into supernatural things uh, and and other ways to, quote-unquote, conquer the world. Yep. Right? And actually, that was a a small plot point in uh, the Captain America film as well, and, of course, Mm -hmm. in other Captain America uh, media, like, media as well. So it's very interesting that we, you know, take that again. And what's even funnier, too, is that, uh, funny in a strange way, is that this show came out of, like, the show obviously came out recently, but the manga came out a very long time ago. So, like, that's been, I mean, heck, even the first Indiana Jones film came out a very long time ago. So this is, like, uh, this, this idea, right, uh, whether or not it was real or not, has existed for years. You know, that like, oh, Hitler or like the Nazis were also looking for supernatural ways, of, you know, to, to, to rule as well. So it's very interesting that, you know, we get them involved with the Pillar Men and in true Nazi fashion are very, very egotistical and egocentric. Just, yep. just bold on the word ego. And they essentially help what seems to be the apocalypse. I mean, yeah, they usually do. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, honest. no, they, 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 yeah, no, just to be straight fucking out, yes, it's just, they just don't factor in their own, which is like, ha ha, yeah. now you're going to die too. Uh, now, here's the thing, though, so, I uh, just want to clarify on something. So, the way, the, the way everything was talked about, the destiny, quote unquote, and stuff like that, while we want to point our fingers and blame the Nazis for everything, because, duh, uh, technically, if they hadn't gotten the first, like, they were going to awaken anyway. They just yeah. were trying to take that one specific one and the first one that we met and take him, experiment on him to try and find a cure, remedy, some kind of way to destroy them, whatever, yeah. whatever it takes. 
because, mostly a yeah, way to destroy to them. Us, yes, because to us, uh, based on the way, even though he somewhat redeemed himself, it was so weird because it's just like, wow, I never would have guessed he would have done that. Yeah, because he's a fucking Nazi, Jojo. Don't <laughs> like. Like, he wants to kill a vampire. It's not an enemy of my enemy is my friend. He's still your enemy. Don't worry. Like, I mean, he, when like, your I'm, enemy is a nearly well, immortal vampire, it, it kind of, like... No, no, no. Very true. No, my whole point is <laughs> he wasn't going to, like, open the door, kill the vampire, and be like, oh, by the way, your friend Smokey, good guy. Love him. Like, he's yeah, still enough. a fucking Nazi. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, Jojo, please remember he's still a fucking Nazi. But anyway, uh, the point, though, is is that, like, the way he made it sound, because he was so, you know, ego-driven, and the rest of them, too, it made it seem like they wanted to harness their power, not find a way to murder them. Yeah, that, too. Like, yeah, which it's just it's weird, too, because it's kind of just like, all right, like, you're, you still should have mentioned that, because it's not going to be a thing where, like, no, you don't understand. No, 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 we're not misunderstanding you. You're, like, don't. Don't fucking act like the victims here, you fucks. No, oh, like, you should have mentioned, the first thing you should have said was, oh, no, yeah, we want to kill them. Not, oh, we are going to use them to fight and control the world. Like, no, fuck you. No. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of why. Because, like, yeah, because the thing is, and I know it was made to build suspense, obviously, but, it, there's a re- like, Speedwagon was freaking out because he was like, no, you're awakening them. And it's like, no, they are going to awaken no matter what. I mean, Speedwagon's, right. like... It's funny, Speedwagon basically just reminds me of Krillin in a sense. It's like, it's like, look, I didn't necessarily fight one-on-one with Dio, but I know what these motherfuckers are capable of. And the fact that you're toying and poking and prodding at one is putting me a little on edge. Gonna be, gonna be real here. And, uh, you know, yeah. you're being really overconfident. You have no idea what he's capable of. And uh, you're going to kill us all. Like, even Speedwagon was just like, why did I live? It's like, why did, like, oh, why, why, that was like, the so. thing. it's like, why did, you know, why didn't, stri- why, why did that not finish me off? Why did I have to wake up and realize, oh, I've been captured by Nazis? Well, this couldn't get any possibly worse. Oh, God, there's another vampire. Mm-hmm. It just got worse. Yeah. It just literally got yeah, worse. Yeah, no. <laughs> Are you saying we're not fearsome? You, uh, yeah, you are. Yeah, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Vampire over there. Actually, yeah. it's like God <laughs> over there. No, not even vampire, technically. I mean, yes, vampire, technically, but, like, more so a god than anything. Yeah. Like, or I, it's still like technically demigod. a vampire. Yeah, demigod. Sorry, you're right. It's, like, still technically a vampire, but, like, I would argue it makes, they, or they, rather, make vampires. Yeah, they're not because well, that's their whole yeah. angle. Like it's it's the masks are kind of like their angle of like furthering evolution. It's like mm-hmm. it, it's weird. It's an odd concept, but it's like oh, getting closer to the pinnacle life form that cannot be destroyed, kind of thing. It's like yeah, their powers <laughs> make them damn near invincible. You know, aside from it's just so sunlight, but no, but that's what's but that's what's really funny. It's like you stupid human. We could destroy you in an instant. All right, fine, out here. No. no yeah. Cool, man. Oh, you geez. could destroy me. Just come on right out here. I'm not going to do that. But I thought you said you were invincible. I am. This is sunlight. I'm aware. Like, it's I just, love... It, it's so funny. I love their fight with, um... Because uh, it's supposed to be, uh... Santana, but obviously they changed the names because they can't use the band names that they had the author, well, the original author use. But Saras Van, here's Saras Vanto, something like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, here's what's really funny. They kept mm. ACDC in a way. Yes, but it's not spelled that way. <laughs> no, but I pissed myself out of sheer <laughs> laughter because you know you have to understand. Everyone else, it's like, oh, Carlos Santana, and it's like. San- Santaismo, like, you know, like, everyone's changed, right? right? But then he's like, you know, like ACDC, and I'm like, they kept it? But then they show the spelling, and I'm like, you sly yep. motherfuckers. Yep. I'm like, you... Because, like, why, I, it's so fun. It's like, you should have kept, like, Santana, or, like, whatever the original one was, but, like, just spelled it differently, like, San... 
Because, like, mm-hmm. I'm sitting here, and I'm like, just, no, I'm like, no, dude, you could do it with ACDC. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. Like, you, I, I honestly think that's what they should have done with as much as they can, right, of the right. show. Like, yeah. it's like, if you're going to, if you're going to, like, go that far for ACDC, right. do it for everyone else, man. Now, obviously, it's a lot harder to do it, like, with subtitles. But, like, in terms of, like, the dub, it's like, just do it with everyone else. Right. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I, uh, yeah, it was very interesting. So, But you weren't talking about ACDC. You were talking about Santana, yes, the, the fight yeah. with Santana. Yes. Uh, you know, the whole <laughs> JoJo is just kind of like, or Joseph is just toying with him. Or at first he's like, you know what, maybe he's not so bad. I mean, the not, you know, you guys were the ones, you know, poking and prodding and shooting at him. Maybe he's not such a bad guy. <laughs> and the minute, the minute he blows him off and walks past him, he's like, oh, you think you're hot shit now. All right, well, maybe I'll just trip you and see how you like it. And then he nearly, like, eats his leg off, and he's like, what the hell was that? <laughs> it was a very interesting situation because not knowing anything about them at all, I also wondered if they were, like, not like they would come in peace necessarily, but, like, yeah. you don't know how evil they are. Like, you're just right. fucking shooting at the thing. You know what yeah. it is? <laughs> After us doing a bunch of, like, King Kong Godzilla podcasts for, like, every Friday night movies, now we're kind of sitting back, like, well, are they evil or are they being shot at? We don't know. <laughs> right. right? And in this case, no, 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 no. They're evil. They've just been asleep, so they don't really know the current human language. I mean... Well, like, it, he learned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not that. I mean, the whole idea of... If they're evil it's odd it's it's like well, obviously they're eating other you know mm-hmm. life forms so it's kind of like eh, yeah mm-hmm. really hard to not like yeah you you, well, you need to stop look, that as yeah as of right now right as of as of this moment as of this podcast as of this you know 10 to 18 of season one they are evil and i say evil yeah. in the sense that like it's not just that they're eating but they have a wanton like just disregard for life yeah so like they just they they just don't care. Right. Now of the, course the yes, later pillar men demi- have mm. like even less, and it's like oh, oh shit yeah there, there's kind of no question yeah. for you guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. But later pillar men, thanks for the spoiler. Um, I'm kidding. Anyway, no, uh, you know the three uh, I'm talking about. Oh my bad. Yes, of course. Yes, sorry. I thought yes. you meant like there were further ones. I was throwing. No, no, anyway. no, no, no. I no, mean yes. the three of them. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wamu, yeah, three of them. And, no, fair enough. Uh, cars. Yes, right. So, yeah, no. Well, I'm just saying more so, like, you know, in general, yeah, that's what I was referring to. They were evil. But even if you're going to say that they're not evil necessarily, still, like, things that they do, there is a clear, like, they feel as if everyone is below them. And, yes, that's right. what demigods would most likely feel. But that is still evil when you are okay with killing anyone. And, you know, yeah. But you understood. You were you were basically separating right. the original with the new three. Um, but Matt, they're killing Nazis. Are... What does it matter? <laughs> oh man. See, that's fine. See, no, no, no. Again, I'm like, I'm not talking about their lives. <laughs> I'm yeah. talking about like Speedwagon and JoJo. Yeah. And right. yeah. And well, and and, was... and Mark. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I mean, not funny, but like he was a Nazi too, technically, but. You kind of saw it's like, yeah, he's not really, he's not like an SS officer. He's just kind of doing his job kind of thing. He's an enlistee. And it's like, yeah, he had a wife that he was going to go home to. And Caesar's like, that was my best friend. And you just, you literally tore him in half by touching him. Yeah. As yeah. horrifying and, and as And of that course, was. you know, yeah, no, it, it does show you a little bit how like, like it's weird because in a way you kind of sit back here and like, oh God, are they like, you know, trying to sympathize, sympathize with the Nazis, not us, like the show. And, like, yeah, yeah you do have to remember that at the time, you couldn't say no. Yeah. Like, you couldn't say, like, no, I'm not with this. I'm not signing up. It's like, uh, that's not an option, man. Right. Right. But there is a difference between, all right, fine, I'll be a grunt, you know, I'll drive some, some cars or something like that, yeah. versus 
what the fucking guys were doing in that lab. In the lab, right, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Or in that compound in general, they were not nice guys. So thankfully we got JoJo to come there uh, in women's clothing. And that I'm was laughing. beautiful. So I like, mean, I like, I understand, right? How there are people out there that are like, oh, but like, you know, that's not funny anymore, and right, I feel like it's okay. demeaning the people as, who cross dress and trans. Cross But here's the thing, no, though, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. It was so over the top. Right. And like, it's not like I don't want to say it was wrong in a funny way because it's not. I don't feel like those two always go together well. But it was just so over the top and like wrong and like a, oh my god you fucking idiot like you really mm. thought that would work like oh hello boys right it's like uh, 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 you, you. oh you didn't fall for my disguise of course we didn't yeah like usually like the one thing I say is because usually in shows like he'll do that and then the shows will be like oh of course oh my goodness you're so you're so cute what's your name no it's just like. Are you, are are you an idiot, dude? Right. Like, n- n- no, no, we're not gonna fall for that. It's like, oh, you're smart Nazis. No, being Nazis is irrelevant. J- no. I'm like, just, what are you doing? Uh, so it was a very interesting scene. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but no, yeah. So like the surrounding guards, uh, and thankfully JoJo took care of them. But the surrounding guards and the ones there, they were clearly bad guys. Right. Yeah. Usually, and I'll say usually, I don't want to say it like, you know, uh, and I'm talking about like in their specific uh, organization. Uh, usually the higher up you go, the the horrible you are, the more horrible person you are. Yeah, I would say normally, right, the higher up you go. But if you're just some dude driving a truck and you have to enlist because you live in Germany, and if you're like, I'm going to leave, they're like, you're as bad as the opposition, we're going to kill you. Never mind, I'll stay. Right. You know, like, I don't know what Mark had done, but I don't think that Mark was the worst guy. Mm. Everyone that we met before him and everyone that we just saw, like, all, you know, taking away the, the stone on the train. Right. Yeah, I'd say they're bad guys. You know, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it was very interesting with, with Mark and what happened there. And in a way, it's funny because, yes, he was a Nazi, but at the same time, he potentially was a, like, he was a um, a double agent because of the fact that he let them in. Unless mm-hmm. he was just like an old, old time, like, an, you know, an old um, friend of uh, Zeppeli. But even then, if he was like, like, he could have been like, no. So I do wonder if, like, he had more ties to Speedwagon and Zeppeli than, than we'd think. But right. we don't know because he, he, he died by a demigod. Yeah. Which, got to be honest, sucky way to go when you're about to get married, but a badass way to go. (laughs) Like, how did you die? Fucking demigod, man. What about you? I tripped in the bathroom. Sucks for you. Demigod. I got hit with a cracker ball of volley. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just basically. Um... But no, it was it was a very strange situation, I think, uh, not just having Mark die in that way, but like I think – and the reason why I said, like, oh, it feels like a different show. I feel like you were a little hesitant when I said that. But the reason why I do is because, like, yes, it's still, like, involving supernatural beings and deities and things like that, but, like, originally it felt more like uh, this, like, one-on-one, man versus man, and I was like, Matt, one of them was undead. Still – Right? Like, you know, their yeah. brotherhood bonds, you know, they had grown up together and now they face off one on one, you know, the, the the years in the making and now they're fighting against each other. And then, oh man, you know, they, like then they introduce some of the more supernatural stuff with like, you know, Dio and then having um, the Dio being a vampire and then, uh, right. you know, the stone mask in general and of course having the Hamon and, and, you know, the Ripple and things like that. But my point is, is that even with the Ripple, Still, seeing like, oh, yes, these gods appear, and now we must fight them in a month and everything. And I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, this is the – I'm sitting here, I'm like, so it's like, is that Cell? It's the World Tournament? What's going on here? <laughs> right. So it was – yeah, it was just very interesting. Like me sitting back and, and looking at the situation, looking how you know it was set up, and just seeing how it really does feel like a different show. Where like if you had repurposed a few things, it could be its own show. 
or at least its own season in itself, which is why it's kind of sad that they condensed it into season one. Right. Kind of sad. But, um, but no, but like, do you see what I mean by that? Like just the idea that it's so different. Like I know obviously things tie into each other, but it's like, It's, 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 but it's very different. I guess it's just, I'm seeing it from a different perspective because I like, it is still the, like in the first, the first half, it's with Jonathan. It does feel like it's this personal vendetta. You know, vendetta. His family has been split apart, and Dio is the monster that has come in and destroyed his life. And he's trying to, you know, basically heal the wounds that that evil has created. But it's also, you know, part two is years later, and it's, yes, obviously different characters. You know, a different Joe Star. But it is still the continuation of a family story. And that, no, of course. Yeah, that kind of comes to more, you know, being tied together later on. So I won't say too much more about that. But fair enough. Yeah, just as of right now, it feels like. And of course, uh, if anyone doesn't know, this part is called Battle Tendency, where first part was called the Phantom Blood Arc. Um, yes. But yeah, so this uh, this Battle Tendency arc, and the reason why it feels so different to me, I think, is because like again, the first part, like we like we we're saying, you know, Vendetta, family. Et cetera, et cetera, right? This part seems more like Granny Arena and Speedwagon. Well, what about them? Need to save them. That's okay. That's what we're going with here, yes. Now, of course, obviously there's, like, other bigger things going on in the background. But, like, again, like, yeah. looking at the main character and the motivations and, like, how that ties into everything, part one felt really strong. And I think that's why having that opening, uh, the original opening, was really powerful and tough. And, like, it yeah. kind of, like, brought out this, like, like it kind of got your blood boiling. It re- like to me right. it did anyway. Like I was always pumped. Like every time I listened to that song, I was like, "Oh man, I gotta start working out." But then the song <sighs> would be over, and I would, I would, I would not do that. But like yeah. while the song was playing, I was like, "Oh my good, I, what am I doing with my life? Why am I not like running laps right now?" But then it would stop, and I'd go right because I'm, I'm lazy. So it really, it really gets the you know like the brain pumping and and the blood boiling, but yeah. I do definitely like that. Uh, another thing too, by the way, I remember that there was a huge controversy when the um, the opening shifted yeah. to the second opening. Yeah. Now I gotta be honest, uh, and I and I might get some flack for this. I don't know. I in a way I like the second opening more. In a way. Mm. Now, here's the thing. First opening is still my favorite for being so different. <clears throat> right? Like, it just right. feels so much, so 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 different than what, uh, you know, I, I really, I mean, at least personally, from what I've seen in anime. Right? Uh, the first opening seems so different. But there's something about the second opening that seems familiar and reminds me of, like, my mid-2000 anime watching days. Mm-hmm. So there's something about the second opening that I really like that kind of draws me in. But the first one is my favorite for being so different. Right. But there's just something about the part two's opening that I don't I, I understand, right? Everyone loved, you know, part one's opening. It was great. But I don't think it would have fit part two at all. And I'm really happy that they shifted to a different opening. But what I'm yeah. really happy about is that they didn't get rid of Roundabout. If they had gotten rid of Roundabout... Then I would have sobbed. Yeah, I am very happy yeah. they kept Roundabout, too. But, yeah, I agree. Each part does have its own distinctive opening, like, so far. And mm-hmm. each opening does really reflect more of the current story that's going on. Exactly, and, yeah. Oh, it fits so well. Like, it'll... No, nah, I can't say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we'll talk about there it when we do the second oh, half. Oh, God, there are of, reasons. Of... <laughs> okay, yeah, no, and we'll reflect on those later. But, I mean, yeah. I know you know about the controversy, too. So, like, how do you feel about, just specifically about the transition from opening one to two? Which one do you like more? And did you, were you a little frustrated? Were you a little, like, was it jarring? Were you a little jolted when they jumped I mean, from the first opening to the second opening? Like, yeah, at first, like, even like I said, between going from one char- one main character to another, even with the openings, I felt 
you know, a little jarred and like I didn't like the second one as much, but like like I said along with watching the episodes, once I got in a few episodes and I really saw where the story was headed, I immediately got hooked and was like, "No, this is amazing. Never mind. I take back all previous comments. I need to shut the fuck up." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I'm I'm actually shocked that you and again, this is you uh, after seeing this uh, season twice at this point, maybe even three times. But like, I'm shocked that you don't hate or you don't despise uh, this JoJo. Really? Like, well, because like he's like, uh, yes, he keeps the same ideals and he doesn't actually want to hurt anyone, but he's such a clown, and I feel like that's something that grates on you. Like, you really get annoyed with when people are a bit too. Uh, like uh, uh, funny in the face of yeah, death. it's funny. I I would kind of, yeah. I I see what you mean, and I would yeah. I can agree with that. But with Joseph, it's not coming from a place of. <clears throat> he has a reason. Yeah, he has a reason for why he's doing it. Like. Even through some of his battle, oh, even specifically with his fight with Wamu, when they're first at you know the um, the second pillar site in Rome, mm. um, you know even Wamu saying to him, it's like, oh, you only play the fool. It's like, I've, you know, Joseph really isn't such an idiot. You know, like that Caesar is looking at him like, you know, you coward, you you know, you idiot. Do you have any idea what's going on right now? He's like, yes, of course I do, but I have my own way of doing things. So if you kindly shut the fuck up, I'm going to try and save our <laughs> lives right now. Right. So that's the thing. Like, he still has, like I said, that underlying honor code that his grandfather had. You know, he just has a different okay. way of going about fights, you know. Whereas yes. Jonathan and I was basically, which... you know, Dio would even say it too. Like, the harder you beat him down the harder he gets back up. And that was his thing with Joseph's. It's right. more of, you know, I need to look at this. Like, I can't hit this harder. I need to hit him smarter. Got it. Yes. And the reason why um, I mentioned the idea of like, Oh, you know, goofing around everything is because we do a lot of Dragon Ball super podcasts here. And I, I mentioned superiority and like, you know, the reason why uh, I think Tristan really gets frustrated when we do Dragon Ball super podcasts, you should totally listen to, by the way, uh, we also do them for Anna Saturdays. Um, the reason why Tristan gets a little frustrated is because when it comes to Goku, he's so powerful at this point that like, yes, you know, like, Yes, he is super powerful. Essentially, he's a god 2.0 at this point. But he should still take things a bit more seriously when it seems like the entire world is in danger. And yeah. yes, the entire world is in danger here, but not in the same way, I guess. Right. right? But still, um, but still, let's acknowledge the world is in danger here. Although, of course, yeah. it is also his first rodeo. And that's another thing, too, I think right. Tristan maybe kind of lets it slide a little bit. Like, it's the first time this kid is actually doing this. Where, like, yes, Goku has experience, but he shouldn't sit there and be like, ah, it'll be a piece of cake. Like, right. no, Joseph, this is really yeah. serious. This is his mm -hmm. first big fight, you know? Like, mm -hmm. in the sense that this is his first, like... Even Speedwagon says that at one point, it's like, oh, if he was fighting any punk on the street, yeah, of course, Joseph would be fine. But this guy is completely out of his league. You know, I really don't think he has a chance. And even Joseph is like, shit, I don't have a chance against this guy. Like, And that's why he ends up bluffing his way. Like, in a sense, yes, he is bluffing, but he's doing, he's using his opponent's, you know, weaknesses against them. Like, Wamu is a very proud warrior, so it's like... Oh, if you give me time to train, like I could totally beat you. And Juan was like, "I'm not falling for that shit. I'm falling for that." Yeah, basically, and it's like, it was, his bluff yeah, works, but not in the way that he had hoped. Because obviously, the two of them put the rings, you know, around his windpipe and his heart. And he's like, "Oh God, this is not how this was supposed to go." It's like I wanted to get out of this to live, not to be dead in a few months. Basically. Yeah, it was a, that was a lot of fun um, yeah. in its own way. Uh, yeah, I was, you know, I was very interested to see that occur because, so like, I don't know, maybe, it, maybe 
it didn't um, occur to you, but like uh, or uh, like other people listening. But my first thought was, oh, so we really are getting into the cell games. Like it was a joke, but kind of serious here. Like it's very interesting seeing certain things that happened here that I'm like, oh, that's like when, and then realizing like, no shit, Matt, this. That yeah. happened – like, this happened before some of the other things happened. So, like, some of the things that you might see, like, in in here that you end up, rem- like, remembering from, like, I don't know, like, let's say, like, Naruto or Bleach or Dragon Ball Z. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I remember when. And then you have to sit back and go, wait, let me make – let me check the years here. Right. And then you slowly start to realize, oh, man, it's – you know, this came out first. Mm. And that's one thing that I think some people might forget. Uh, even though I'm very happy that JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has a huge following, I do think that the only thing that it has against it, that thankfully I'm, I'm happy it hasn't kept it from being popular, is that it's coming out at a time where all of the things that it's doing that weren't tropes when it was written are now tropes. Right. And that usually hinders uh, movies, and it hinders shows. Like, look at uh, the John Carter movie. Do you remember that one, the one that Disney released a few years back, live action? It was like John uh, Carter of Mars. He was like some dude on in space. Okay. Yeah, that's literally how well it did, Tristan. And here's the thing, right? That movie was actually an adaptation of, like, a bunch of different sci-fi novels that were revolutionary in the 1950s. Disney makes them, and but at this point, they're not revolutionary anymore. Everyone else has done these concepts. Right. So the movie flops. So I'm very happy that this show currently ha- you know, is living a very, very good life. Yeah. Because I feel like the further it goes on in the series, the more it's like, yes, it still has those tropes here and there, but it also does them in a way that at least for me, not a lot of other anime or shows do. Like, they do it in their own unique way. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I also would like to mention... Yes, mm -hmm. please go on. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say that uh, this this actually... Because I want to always clarify when the manga came out, because I think I said, oh, late late 70s, early 80s. It was actually late 80s, Matt. It was 1987 when the... uh, Yeah, when it came out. But um, but still very interesting because like, like I said it's still going on till today, but right. uh, but yeah so part one let me see I just want to make sure when part one and part two were written uh, obviously part one would have been written in 1987 duh and then part two came out in 19 oh still 1987 all right fair enough to 1989 yeah right anyway so please continue. Uh. Well, you no, were discussing I'm... the fact that it, the tropes are done in a different way, and you appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I'm well, I'm happy to hear it, Tristan. Yes, I mean it, it's more as like the series goes on because there is an i the, the idea is like even the author, you know, writing the series kind of saw other series like I know at least two other, you know, DBZ or not Dragon. Well, Dragon Ball as a whole and. Yu Yu Hmm. Hakusho kind of coming out at the same time and the author realizing like okay I can't just do a straight you know beat em up like a lot of other series are doing right now I'm not going to survive like that so like it's for part you know part three obviously that's further but things take an even bigger change and twist and like and that's what's and that's what's great about this like I'm the saying series itself. The series as a whole, yes. He took it in a direction yeah. that it could evolve into something in, a, in its own niche, I guess would be the appropriate way to put it. Yeah, which is a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I also think that uh, sadly it wasn't his work, but there's another manga called Billy Bat that mm-hmm. is all, like, also does something very similar with how it uh, jumps around via, you know, timelines and things like that. And I'm just such a huge fan of that. Of just that mm. concept overall. So, you know, I'm really happy that I might say that he started it, but like I'm really happy that he went with that because I honestly think that even though it obviously took so long for this uh, anime to be made and for this manga to be adapted, 
Uh, well, granted, it was adapted in the like 2000s, but we don't really talk about that. Um, it was it was kind of part three was done randomly. We don't really we don't really discuss it. Um, we may on the show, but like in general, in real life, we don't really discuss it. Uh, but the point is, right, Tristan, is that um, you know it's it, even though it took a long time for it to be made, right? It is like it was still something that like the way it was done was you know was so. I would just say well done that it's it's lived on. Like obviously the manga's still going, but like even this anime yeah. has been going on for a very long time. So like yeah, even though it took a while to animate, that doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't popular. And what I, what I was trying to say is that if he had gone in a more linear direction, I don't yeah. think even though it took a long long time to animate, I don't think we would be talking it about JoJo's survived. Bizarre Adventure today. Yeah. Yeah. Because it had a pretty Great. decent, you know, underground following for a while, and then within the last few years, yeah. it's finally gotten its big break, and even more people have joined. You know, the people that were there before haven't left, and now new people are joining on, so now it's become even bigger. Yeah, because I had always heard about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but before the anime, uh, there was no legal uh, way to read it. Other right. than part three that Viz had released, but they had released it with a bunch of edits, and it was only part three. Yeah. So, like, no right. one's going to want to jump in. in the, like, that's like saying, oh, we're releasing, like, the Frieza saga. Uh, yeah, right. And don't worry about anything that happened before it. We're just starting from the Frieza saga. Like, no, I wouldn't want to read that. Right. It'd still be fun, but you're not going to want to read that. So like, even starting from DBZ as a jumping point is okay because <laughs> we all did that as kids. Right. But, like, imagine starting from in the middle of DBZ, just from Frieza, being told, like, yeah. here's the manga, start from here. You don't legally have any way of reading anything before it. Right. So, yeah, I, I would not be happy with that, right? Right. So that's why I never really got into JoJo, but I had heard so much about it. And, you know, I was very happy that – now we have, you know, a legal um, manga out there. And the reason why, too, is, like, not only should you not download illegally, but the translations were also terrible mm-hmm. from what I've heard. So it was a double whammy. Like, you shouldn't do that because it's illegal. But even if you tried, the right. translations were terrible. So it would be like you're not even reading it anyway. Yeah. So overall, it, it was just, you know, I'm very happy that, you know, Viz has uh, Viz picked it up and Warner Brothers is working, you know, ha- like is the license holder for it. it right. You know, yeah. So I'm very happy about its, um, you know, about its um, kind of how, how it's come back into, or how it's just come into the uh, public eye in general. But no, I definitely think that it, it would just have a, if it had went linear, it had just had a small blurb, being like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, you know, 1987 to like 1992. I'm not saying it wouldn't have been like somewhat successful. But I don't think it would have been what, what it is today or anything close to what it is today if he right. didn't jump to other eras. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but, yeah, so just specifically Battle Tendency. Um, yeah, I'm loving where they're going, right? I love where they currently are. And the only thing that I'll complain about, right, and mm-hmm. uh, I think I did this last podcast, but I still want to talk about it here. I feel like some of the animation style choices are a bit too esoteric for my taste. Okay. Like, essentially, just like looking at the looking at when they were in the lab, right? Mm-hmm. With uh, you know, and um, the the first Pillar Man bra- breaks out, and you know right. he gets out of the vent and he's trying to kill everyone. Just the way they had the backgrounds be like completely different psychedelic colors. While everyone else, some people like just kind of were standing there like they were kind of cardboard cutouts. Right. While he's moving towards them, I'm just not the biggest fan. Now I'm not mm-hmm. going to say it's a bad animation, you know, style or a bad animation choice because, you know, like then we get into the same conversations that you and I have had for Star Wars Wednesday when we were doing mm-hmm. the Clone Wars. And right. people were really shitting on that. And Lucas said, and, and others said, no, we wanted to do it this way because we wanted it to look like Thunderbirds, which was an older um, show that was done where everyone was like a puppet, right? Like right. all the characters were basically puppets. And people were saying, that's so stupid. They all look like puppets. And it was like, that's the point, right? right. So like you don't have to like it, but I don't want to say it's necessarily bad. So I don't want to say, oh, you know, 
JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has bad animation for its first season, but it's definitely something that I'm not always the biggest fan of, at least when it's moving. As a picture, as a still, I think it's really cool to have that kind of background and to have them standing there like, oh, and stuff like that. But in motion, it just looks weird. Mm-hmm. And there's always some scenes when it comes to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that in motion, they just look weird. And right. you and I have said similar things about Toei's Dragon Ball Super, mm-hmm. right? But but it's definitely – it's funny. It's very noticeable there because they go from, like, HD to, like, Goku's eyes looking weird, right? Yeah. But here, it's I think it's even weirder in a way because they're not – like, obviously the show is made in HD, duh. But it's not the same kind of animation style. In a way, so like it is, you know, made differently. But then out of nowhere, it'll just you'll kind of just see like this weird, like kind of background or this weird meshing of you know, uh, characters together. Or also, of course, and this isn't JoJo's fault. I'm just never a big fan of this. 3D cars in 2D anime is always weird to me. Right. Like when they were driving with Mark. Yeah. Yeah, that's always just weird to me. But um, yeah. but again, I think that's something minor compared to the story overall. It just kind of throws me off mm-hmm. sometimes, like the animation. Right. Yeah. But um, but yeah, anything you want to say about um, about the arc that you really enjoyed or that you really didn't enjoy? Because of course, you know, we've been kind of talking about what we like about the arc or the or the series. But please tell me anything you didn't enjoy about the story thus far. Um. Well, I mean, <laughs> got to be honest, there's really not a lot about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure that I don't enjoy. So, mm-hmm, I would enough. say well, no, but one like, point, what would you have done differently? Yeah, or something like that. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I I honestly don't know that there's really anything I would have done differently here. Um okay. But I, there is one point that we haven't really touched on that I wanted to get to uh, with the, well, Lisa Lisa, their Hamon coach. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> just the fact that their first, like, how did you react with their first meeting? She stands up out of the gondola and immediately smacks Joseph in the face with the oar, putting the mask on him, and then Caesar's like, Coach, I didn't realize it was you. <laughs> I w- I'm confused about a lot of things. I'm happy that happened because at first I'm like, you're evil. I'm like, this is Dio's kid. It's like, Matt, chill the fuck out. No, it's not. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I'm sorry. Something's, something's weird. I'm just I feel like something's off. Right? right? But then she just ends up being the coach. I think just her name is weird. Well, because the reason why is I don't know what it's a reference to. But, like, I think it's just always yeah. weird when... Not always, but there usually there there tends to be some weird situations when um uh, a Japanese author makes mm-hmm. American names or like names that aren't made for Japan. Right. So you end up having a situation where it's just like uh, if you remember like the kid when they the first kid that they met in um in part one, his name was Poco mm-hmm. and it's just like that's that that wouldn't be a British kid's name, I think. Right. In the eighteen hundreds, right? Or that's just like, it's Lisa Lisa. And I'm like, that wouldn't be a woman's name in Rome in the 1920s. Right. So, like, that was weird to me. Um, but I think it would have been Venice. I, I, yeah, they were the, in Venice at this point. But Venice. Yeah, yeah they were. Uh, yeah, they Italian were in Rome, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, it was strange, right? And But, but oh, actually, that was another strange thing. Seeing her butt mm-hmm. so much, I was like, guys, come on oh, yeah. now. I know right. this anime isn't for kids, so like obviously it's not. Because usually when uh, when Dragon Ball Super, right, when a dub of the, like Dragon Ball Super will have them be like, "Damn you, you bastards! Oh, you shits!" and I'm like, "Guys, this show's meant to be aired for children at 8 a.m. on a Sunday. Like, you don't have to dub it that way, right?" But this is obviously not meant for kids. This is late right. night anime. Perfect slot to have it on for Toonami, right? Yeah. Uh, so duh, late night anime, late, late night anime, bloop, 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 get it, right? But still, seeing her butt, granted, I'm not saying it was a bad butt, 
it was just strange to have that scene play, or just the general, like, her removing her clothes slowly, then getting right. into the bath, yeah. then, oh, man, I'm just there naked. I mean, granted, like, I, I get it, you know, vulnerable position. Oh, yeah. I, and also, by the way, as much as much as much as it was kind of like, oh, God, like, we're really going to have to have this JoJo do that, again, mm-hmm. showing you how different he is from his grandpa, though. Like, yeah. despite the fact that I don't think it makes him any more likable, and you kind of sit there and you're like, oh, God, please, oh, God, come on, don't do that. At the same right. time, though, you sit back and you're like, well, he's not his grandpa. Yeah. And also yeah. at the same like his, time, he does realize that, oh, crap, something's wrong. It's like, wait, what is – and Suzy Q. Su, uh, Suzy Q is so funny. Like, just, you know, a character to have around – a nice, I don't mm-hmm. know, a nice character to have around. Um, yes. But then, well, here's the thing. No, but but the thing is, if she, if he had heard her voice and be like, I didn't hear her come into this room, and then he looks. True. Then it's yes. okay. No, but yeah, looked, I'm not defending his actions. Yeah, no, that obviously not appropriate of him to do. But yeah, like the the one thing I will say though is his grandpa, because he wouldn't have looked in there, she would have died. Yeah. And so he would have, right, and that's, very, like, that's how it would have gone. He would have heard the scream and been like, what's going on? Opens the door. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> Literally his grandson, if only you would have looked. It's like, well, of course I wouldn't look. She was nude. Uh, <laughs> like, it's, like it, yeah, it's kind of sad that they set up a story in that way where, like, he had to look because, thankfully, it was the heroic thing to do. Shut up, narrator. Um... <laughs> It uh oh yeah, and, and the dub, by the way, was mm-hmm. actually not as unpleasant as the first part in some ways. Right. Still a little confused as to why um Joseph has mm-hmm. a um a British accent. But from the sounds of it he was he hasn't been in New York for long. No. They only came to New but York good. to meet up with Speedwagon, so as far as we understand, he's been in London his whole, or been in England his whole life. So and that's perfect. That's perfect. Right. Yeah. Because at first, because I thought he was the like for yeah, me I hearing he was the New York Joe hearing the yeah hearing the you know British accent or him the voice that they gave for him in the dub like I could see mm-hmm. why they did it but I didn't really like it. Now that I've actually I like, sat back and watched yeah. it, I'm like, all right, you know what? Because I know you had asked me before, like, oh, you know, what did you think of the dubs and how did you like it? And I'm like, I not because I had seen the, the Japanese and I, the vo- the uh, voice actor for Joseph is the same guy who does another voice I really love in a different anime. So I was really happy to see him in this. So when mm-hmm. I saw it. You know, obviously he's a different voice. It's like, ah, it's really not doing it for me. But now that I've actually sat back and watched it, no. the Like, I really don't have a problem with the voices for the dub. I think they did, you know, I think they did well with it. Yeah, I think he was actually better than Johnny Young Bosch, just in the fact of him having a British accent. That's all. Right. Like, in no way am I trying to say that Johnny Young Bosch isn't a good actor. But, mm. like, I'm just not a big fan of his British accent. Right. Because you like it just I don't know maybe because I know his voice because you know I know that's Johnny Young Bosch but like it just sat, even though there was a difference between the trailer like the little small uh, shorts that we would see you know trailers for uh, Toonami versus the actual like dub itself I still feel like it's weird where he's like Dio I'm going to try to fight you and let's just like right. it's not really. Uh, yeah, well, like, this guy, I actually don't even know if he is British or not. If he is, great. Mm. If he's not and he's doing an accent, cool. But it doesn't sound as weird to A my guy ears putting on as Johnny Young Bosch did. Yeah. Right. Well, again, he might be putting it on, too, but it doesn't sound as, right. as jarring as Johnny Young Bosch putting it on. Yes, that's what I mean. It sounds more yeah, yeah, natural of course. to yeah. you. It does, yes. Um, and And it's also very interesting how... With some of the characters, they they had a very, like, Italian accent, but then some didn't. Where, like, yes, yeah. you ended up having Zeppeli's grandkid have more of an Italian accent than he would because Zeppeli has been kind of traveling around the world. Right, right? for a while. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes sense that his grandson would have a thicker accent than he would. 
But when mm. we had um uh what was what was her name again? The um who she got possessed? You just said her name earlier. Susie Q. Susie Q. The yeah. accent that her actress did for her was no bueno. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was the only one so far that I was like in this part that I was like, "Oh. Oh." Cuz like yeah. even the even the Nazis at the like yes, some of them weren't like they felt like they were not German and they were trying to put one on, but like still there was still something there that I was like, "No, it's just it's me expecting a different kind of accent from what I've heard when people put on German accents." But like right. that doesn't mean that theirs were bad. Mhm. But that Italian one was mm. – and the re- the re- it's funny. The reason why it's a problem is because, like, if everyone was doing accents like that and they were doing it more tongue-in-cheek, it's okay. Right. But the fact that they didn't go with that approach yeah. – well, like, in my opinion, right, the show thus far with their accents, they haven't gone super wacky. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they've been trying to go wacky and I haven't picked up on it, Right. But it hasn't felt like they've been wacky with the accents. It's not like they've been trying to be somewhat um, faithful to them. Mm. So to then have her come on and be like, hey, how are you doing? It's me. And I'm like, oh. Right. I'm like, oh, okay, Susie Q. Like, this uh, this is strange. Yeah. But um, but no, I but yeah, you were mentioning the fact that we weren't really talking more about Lisa Lisa, so I made sure to move away from that topic. No, uh, Lisa Lisa, I enjoy her character, and I think we needed someone like her as well because, you know, as much as you kind of want to see the two, uh, both being you know the the newest JoJo and having Zeppeli's grandkid, you want to see them both team up and beat up some bad guys. But yeah. again, right, you bring up you you bring up bad guys who are demigods, you can't really do that, right? And you're not going to have any filler, which is good. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's a good thing. Right. So, like, they, you can't show them beating up random vampires together. Yeah. So you kind of need to give them an instructor to train them. Right. So you end up having a situation where you're like, so this is how Roshi looks in this universe? Yeah, right. Like, it It was nice. Like, that. that's, you know, her role in this is the instructor, but she really establishes like right off the bat. It's like, I'm not going to be soft with you two. You have, I think 83 days, I think was the count or something like that. You have X amount of days to be able to be the three of them. So it's either well, you die it's here. Month. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. All right. Well, I, was it a month? Was it three months? I'm not sure what he said now. Oh, I, no, uh, I thought it was I thought it was only I can beat you in a month and then he said, "Yeah, so it'll be a month." I didn't realize he gave him more time than a month. I can't remember now whether he specifically said a month mm. or more than a month. But okay. The fact that she's, you know, like, "Look, I have to do this for your own good." It's like if I am not hard on you and make you as, you know, as good as you can be, you're not going to stand a chance. And that's the thing, like, Joseph is crafty and very intelligent, but, you know, even Caesar can see for himself, it's like, yeah, your Hamon powers, your, you know, your actual battle skills, you're going to need some training, like, you need some work. And that was kind of cool to be able to, like, you know, he is the main character, but it's like, yeah, you still have room to improve. And granted, Caesar did, too. But that was mm-hmm. that was why why I liked their training arc with you know the Hell's Pillar and you know with the other two instructors, even though they flash through quite a bit of that. But Caesar and Joseph kind of grow together as companions through their training, which is yeah. nice. And I mean, you know, it kind of reminds me of Goku and Krillin. You know, like yeah, no, that's why I mentioned Roshi. So it was very yeah. it was very interesting. I liked it. Um, you know, one thing that um, even though I okay, so I'm happy that they didn't jump into Dio again right away. I've heard that they do later. I'm happy that they didn't hmm. do it right now in this moment. Right, right. I'm happy that it wasn't like, oh, you know, you thought Dio was dead, but really, <laughs> like, it would be funny for <laughs> meme pur- <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It would have been funny for meme purposes, but like, I'm yeah. really happy yeah, that they don't go right back to Dio. However, 
I still do think that even though this this show and this manga is known for, you know, being very over the top, it mm-hmm. still in a way does feel like a little bit of jumping the shark that even though it might seem like a logical progression that they're still focusing on the masks, which it is, right? I'm happy yeah. they're still focusing on the masks. But right. to go from Dio to Demigod and to then have – to not keep the main character, which, again, I'm happy that he's gone because, again, you can move on to someone new and you don't just have to focus on him. But the fact that he's dead – and he, you know, and he hasn't kept on training, and now you have a new kid who's never trained in his life. It's going to get weird unless you have other. And again, I don't know how, what happens later, but you have other yeah. Hamon masters try to come in and help him, like in the battle itself. And again, I don't know if it's going to happen. I would like if it did, but as of right now, it just feels a little weird because it feels like you have to go up against three demigods, and you somehow manage to kill one, but or two technically, but like there's still two more and they seem to be even more powerful and focused than that one. If right. through only a month of training, he can do that again. I know the show's over the top, but like that's, it seems like a bit too much for me even. I mean, just I, you even see yeah. how he fights against ACDC. Like that's mm-hmm. also, I think something that a lot of villains have and a lot of people like, this is kind of the thing in Star Wars that's done a lot too. Like people underestimate the idea of a villain's overconfidence. And I guess maybe yes. for them it's not as flashy or as interesting, but like the idea that the hero, like in this case, like Joseph may not be as strong as ACDC. It's like, but he knows how to outsmart him. Even when ACDC is a very intelligent foe in his own right, you know, mm-hmm. it's that arrogance that it's, you know, I'm the perfect life form and you're a lowly human. It's like, of course I'm going to beat you. It's like, you're giving me an advantage right there. It's like, you haven't seen yeah. me in a month. Granted, it's been, you know, it's it's only a few, you know, a month or a few months. And like, oh, how much could I have learned in that time? You'd be surprised. No, I understand. I'm not saying yeah. that, um, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. Cause of course it does. I'm just saying that it happens with one of them. The other one, it was more of like a, he wasn't really used to his environment yet mixed in with some other things that he wasn't prepared for. Yeah. So that one, right. I don't want to say it was sheer luck, but that one was really like a test for both of them, you know? Yeah. But, um, but with ACDC, yes, it was clearly the fact that, you know, this Jojo had trained more and he didn't realize how, um, like he underestimated him. And of course, then we made sure not to kill him off immediately by having him possess Susie Q and keep yeah. that going. Of course. His, right. Uh, that, yeah. that like freaked me out. Like just, just the twist of his brain survived and possessed mm-hmm. somebody else to be like, Oh, remember, you know, the stone that you were trying to protect. So, you know, zealously against, you know, from me taking, yeah, that's on a, on a train on its way to my other compatriots right now, but I'm not going to yeah. let you leave because I'm going to kill this girl. If you try and leave without finishing me off, but I know you can't kill her. Right. It's like, cause yeah. then Joseph comes in. It's like, well, you know, if it's for the sake of the earth and it's one person's life, I think I could easily do it. And it's like he winds up for the punch. And even Caesar and Lisa Lisa are like, you can't do that. And <laughs> But he's like, I'm yeah. going to do it. I'm going to do oh, I just can't do it. It's like, oh, God damn it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. It, um, yeah. I, the reason why I mentioned, though, that, um, you know, I mentioned, like, just the idea that, okay, so those two, it was either a mix of overconfidence and generally like not being aware of your surroundings. I don't feel like the other two are going to have the same problem, though. Right. At, at least not one of them. Like the one who yeah. didn't challenge. Uh, the yeah, one who isn't cars. the warrior. The Sorry. leader. Yeah, cars. Yeah. yeah, their leader. Yeah, so I do worry about the future, and I hope that they end up kind of having like a – like Lisa Lisa does get involved in the same way that Zeppeli did because it would be yeah. kind of weird if it's just going to be the two of them. Because before they went to the whole, you know, like demigod thing, I thought, yes, having the two of them fight a horde of them, two of them, of course, being Zeppeli's grandson and, um, you know, and being this Jojo, having them yeah. both team up and fight like hordes of vampires. I was like, fuck yeah. And then seeing them potentially be Nazis. And I'm like, yes, you know, again, fight harder. But right. now that we've introduced more than one, like, right. look, again, I'm, I never want to be the person to say I think we need to slow things down and have some filler 
and, you know, like extend things. Believe me, like I said earlier, Tristan and I lived off of DBZ, and that hurt <laughs> us. Like, that scarred us for filler. Like, every time I tell Tristan that something has filler, he's like, does it? Okay. He's like, I don't know if I'll watch. Uh, I'll, I'll, I guess I'll watch if I have to. So, like, it's crazy. It's kind of like, no, Tristan, it's okay. Because um, that's just how it is with us. Like, you know, when it came to, like, DVZ filler as a kid, even though it was shown daily in the U.S., still, it, it just hurt, right? So, yeah, when you look at this show, I'm happy that it was, it's not coming at a snail's pace. But yeah. the way that, you know, introducing that plot point and then having the show really speed up, it just kind of feels like JoJo – we're not seeing Jojo learn the things that he's learning. Right. So I really do hope that, and so I'm happier, even though I haven't seen any of the seasons yet, I'm happier that the next season, right, which is part three, it got a full season. Yeah. So that we're able to really see everything. Like, I granted, I don't know how long part three was as a manga, but my point is, is that it, it, I feel like it would be more fleshed out that way. Right. Because not just jumping to, because I feel like, you know, this part two of season one, it was really in a bad spot right now because it's trying to jump into part two. So jump into something new, have it be a new Jojo, have it be a new plot, but with deities right? and having to show him train, but we can't show him train completely or like for a long period of time because of the fact that we can only do 26 episodes. Right. Cause that's the thing. Like I'm not saying that we should do the whole, like, even though I think it would work for JoJo if they had kept it running the same way they had DBZ because the manga's already at part nine. But still, mm-hmm. right, I'm cool with them taking breaks, right? That's fine. It it helps with production. And, you know, JoJo is popular enough at this point that it's not like taking a break is going to stop it from being popular. Right. But, you know, I, I do think – I am kind of – you know, I feel as if if they had it continuously going – and they didn't feel like they needed to stop and have it conclude in a certain amount of episodes, maybe some things would be a little bit better in terms of how they're presented in the anime. Okay. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But, um, but either way, it's funny. I, I, cause the thing is, I look at this approach compared to the – or looking at it and comparing it to the One Punch Man approach. One Punch Man is still ongoing as a manga, hasn't been going on for a while, very happy that it only got 13 episodes, and now we have a season two coming out. Right. Right? I just bring it up with JoJo because it's been going on since the 80s. Yeah. It, it you know, it's, if they had kept it going for a while and didn't stop it until, like, part five or six, yeah, it would still be at part nine. You know, that wouldn't change. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Anyway. Anything you want to say before we kind of wrap things up? Yeah, um, I would say there is still a lot more to come up. There, there's going hmm. to be, huh, there's going to be a lot. Uh, you will get a little bit more into the details of the stone masks and stuff like that. Even more detail into, you know, Lisa, Lisa. So, I think once you see how the story wraps itself up, I think it'll like, everything will overarch better for you. Mm-hmm. Um, Fair enough. I do I do want to ask you one thing, though, before we end. Uh, Please. So what was your reaction when uh, Von Stronheim came back? <laughs> I was like, okay, so apparently we're just fucking killing off JoJo's left and right. But apparently <laughs> everyone else lives. Because we also had the same thing happen with, um, you know, with um, uh, Speedwagon. Mm. You know, just a, that's the thing too, right? I when I saw that happen, I was like, God damn it! I was like, It's happening, everyone. Um, yeah. But the way I look at it is like this, right? It's crazy, but again, you know, in a in a manga way, it kind of feels like the FMA approach, where like characters you thought were dead weren't, and because you read that chapter where they died, like two years ago because of how the chapters are released, you're freaking right. the fuck out. Yeah. But looking at the way the anime did it, you know, and again, I don't want to be a jerk, but because of the, you know, it was only a few weeks later, it kind of feels overused. And it's not the anime's okay. fault, right? Because again, right. in a manga, even though I haven't read the manga, 
right? Yeah. I haven't read that part of the manga. I'm sure mm-hmm. that if I was reading it on a weekly basis, I'd be like, Speedwagon died, no! Speedwagon's yeah. alive, yes! Hey, German guy died, cool. Nazi guy died, cool. And then months, you know, like weeks later, months later, holy shit, he's not dead! Yeah. Right? So I feel like it would have a different impact. In the same right. way that while I – and I know people might yell at me for this. I haven't finished Brotherhood, Full Moon Alchemist right. Brotherhood. I have finished the original manga. So for me, that's how I felt when reading the manga. But when watching Brotherhood, I'm sure it won't have that same impact because it's you know on a weekly basis. Mm. But um, same thing happens with Doctor Who, actually, uh, you know, because there were some mid-season finales that they were trying out for a bit where you and I would sit there and be like, why? And then we'd have to wait for, you know, like six months, right? But when you watch right. them on any, subscri- you know, any streaming service, it's like, oh, no, what's going to happen? I'll see it in about a minute. Right. Like, there's, there's a certain gravitas that isn't really there. Um, and it's, mm-hmm. again, it's not their fault, you know, when they created the anime. They had to create it in a 26-episode span. But I'm sure mm-hmm. in the manga, it had a bigger impact to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I, I felt think, like just the idea that yeah. they did it, like, how how they brought him back in. Granted, they talk, like, they catch up to the train, and he talks to them a little bit first, but it's like... Obviously, it's kind of obvious for the person watching, but, like, the characters are like, who the hell is, like, who are you talking to me like you know me? I don't know, like, even Joseph is like, I don't know any Nazi soldiers. The hell are you talking to me like you know me? Fair but enough, But later yes. on, when Cars is like, well, I know you have the stone now. I'm going to take back what's mine. And just, like, other, like, other than the cool power of, like, oh, so that's your weapon. It's the blade in your arm. Holy crap. He calculates how to destroy everyone in the room by reading the body heat and the heat from the fireplace coming off like from outside and then mm-hmm. they're all dead inside and he walks in and he's and then of course von Stronheim starts talking to him and he's like huh that's odd I could have sworn I only counted five and Joseph walks into the other end of the room it's like hey you know what's a guy got to do around here to get oh What's going on in here? Holy crap. <laughs> what Von Stronheim, it's like, how come I couldn't sense your body heat? What? <laughs> like, I feel like even the, the age-old, you know, the age-old eternal vampire is like, the hell are you? It's like, I am the pinnacle yeah. of science! I am the cyborg! It's like, oh, oh no. Even Joseph yeah. is like, do you... Do you ever die? Like, I mean, I I don't want to say I'm happy to see you, but at the same time, like, holy shit, man. <laughs> you know, I, I get you. I agree 100%. It was a very, yeah. very interesting situation. And yeah. I can't wait to do the next part uh, of season two, or season one, rather, of, you know, part two. And yeah. uh, the next part, and kind of wrap this season up and, and see where we're going. Because, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. I sound a little bit negative, a little bit. So, like, you know, I, I you know, and, you know, and I don't mean to be. It's just that, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's um, the way they've positioned everything, right? I know that they have to do everything in like a, you know, in a in a limit. They have a time limit for how they have to wrap everything up. So, or like do certain episodes. So it just seems like things are being skipped. That's all, yeah. right? And I know from reading some of part one, or most of part one at this point, that certain things were skipped or kind of glossed over or kind of sped through. So, you know, I I do want to see what the rest of this season holds, and I definitely can't wait for part three, because I right. know that, you know, part three is long, and in part four is even longer, I believe. Right? The anime. Um, I'm not sh- I would argue part three is still longer, not sure. But okay, or, or it could be the reverse. Again, I haven't seen them, so I don't know. I just know that they're longer than, well, obviously yeah. longer in the sense that part three takes up the whole season instead of being a chunk of twenty-six episodes, or it might even yeah. be longer than that. I don't remember. Right? I just know that yeah. one is longer than twenty-six, and then the other one is twenty-six, and that's great, right? Because it feels, uh, or even long, maybe even a little bit longer than twenty-six. The point is, is that they're able to kind of get it done at their own pace. Right, which is nice. So I can't even. I can't, I definitely can't wait for those. 
Um, one thing I'll say is I forgot. I always forget how graphic this series is before I Holy watch God. it again. I, it's so funny because I always <laughs> forget. So I'm always yeah. because it's like like I don't. Like, I don't forget how certain shows are going to be, like, bloody. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll, like I'll yeah. never forget, like, Dead Man Wonderland. Mm. Mm. Or um, I'll never forget, you know, how certain, depending on what version you're watching of Dragon Ball Z, there's a lot mm. of blood. Mm. Like, I won't forget that. But, like, just for some odd reason, I'm like, no, JoJo, it's, you know, it's not going to be that bad. And then I'm watching it. I'm like, right. Because JoJo has right. those, like, it uses it very well. There are those specific moments where it ramps it, like, you know, we're at, like, a 20, 30, you know, it's still a fighting anime, but then we just go, like, rocketing way up to 100, and you're like, oh, okay. I forgot yeah, we can no, do that. Like, can we stop? Can we Can we hit the brakes yeah. for a little bit? Holy shit. Yeah, no, because, <laughs> like, you see everyone with their bulging biceps, and it's like, yes, we're going to punch each other until we can't punch each other anymore. But then all of a sudden one person's like, except I can snap my own neck. And breathe blood. And it's like, right! Forgot about that! Yeah. Like, it's interesting. Like, they could literally punch each other until they don't have fists or faces anymore. But it won't look that bad or won't seem that bad until one of them contorts into, like, origami. Human origami. And you're like, ha-ha! Or someone, you know, bumps slightly into somebody else and then half of their body is missing. Right, yes, of course. Something so small. Um, it was, yeah, this is a very interesting show, and I definitely do enjoy it. I know I sound like I'm someone who's, who's nitpicking, but I, I really do enjoy this show, and I can't, um, I can't wait for more. So I want to thank you guys for listening in as always, unless Tristan has something else to say. I think I'm good for now. All right. So I want to thank you all for listening in as always. Uh, love that you guys are here with us through everything that we do. And uh, I just want to mention, I mentioned our podcasts. Oh, actually, I mentioned the Let's Plays before. I mentioned those guys play over at YouTube. You can search that up and find us there. Uh, Tristan and I, for season two, speaking of anime, uh, for season three, rather, speaking of anime, you and I actually did Dragon Ball Z Budokai uh, for an episode of season three. And we expanded that into Those Guys Play Dragon Ball Z, where you and I have played Budokai, Infinite World, and we have another game coming up, actually, another um, Those Guys Play Dragon Ball Z game coming up. So you can tune in, and you can actually find that over at our YouTube channel, Those Guys Play. Now, you're listening to one of our podcasts right now, because you're here, right? You're here listening. I'm assuming you're listening to a podcast. Uh, now, it depends on where you found it, though. You may have found it through Blog Talk Radio by searching up Those Guys on the Radio. You may have found it slash Those Guys on the Radio. You may have found us through iTunes by searching up Those Guys. Or you may be listening to our backlog of shows over at our YouTube channel, Those Guys on the Radio. And even though it says that it's a review, you may be one of the people that's confused because you thought it was the real episodes. That's happening, everyone. And mm-hmm. it is the funniest thing. No, because Tristan and I are seeing the comments. It is the funniest thing to list that you are a review, but to, and to not be as long as whatever it is you're reviewing, because this is only like an hour and a half. 10 oh, to right. 18 would not be an hour and a half long. And then to see the comments that tell me what to eat and where to put and how to die, it's great. It's wonderful. It's a joyous occasion. Anyway, so... If you want to listen, if you're listening to us, you might be listening to us through our uh, through our YouTube channel, Those Guys on the Radio, uh, or also, by the way, you may have found this show through our social media accounts. We have our merchandise also on our website as well, one of our social media accounts. Our website, by the way, being tgproduction.net or thoseguysontheradio.tumblr.com. Our merchandise will be located at tgproduction.net slash merchandise or thoseguysontheradio.tumblr.com slash merchandise. You can find, uh, I mentioned our merchandise there, for our Those Guys Play stuff and for our podcast stuff, fun little quotes or things like that that we've said throughout the show. Uh, so you can find that over there. Also, if you want to hear about our new show, they mentioned our website already. You can also check out our Facebook, which is slash those guys on the radio, our Twitter, which is at those guys radio, and our Instagram, which is slash those guys on the radio. Uh, and through our Twitter and our Facebook, we post a lot of funny pictures and memes, and also, of course, you know, our podcasts and our Let's Plays, and anything else that we're doing as well, any other little productions or shorts and stuff like that. So yeah, so I want to thank you guys as always. Love that you guys are here. And, you know, we're we're at the end of another show, another end of Saturday, and it's a very bizarre adventure. Ha! Tristan, laugh. 
interested. But it was really me. You did it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh. I was nervous. I was like, oh, God, Dio is going to appear in this season. But then you said it wasn't. I was like, oh, okay. Do you have anything witty to end us off with, Tristan? Or just was that supposed to be your end? Because you could have just no, said it, and then I would have ended the show. But but, yeah, but then you said no, and then that prompted me to, to say something. So now we're in this okay. eternal struggle of, of Maybe speaking. I'll come back as a cyborg because I failed so hard that I'm probably going to have to die for it. All right, I respect that. I respect that. Good night, everyone. I respect that.